financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Today's topic is financial issues with the new economy. Jenny Wingle, our Hi, tax Ken. expert, how are you? I'm good, good to be here today. Jeffrey Kirshner. Nice as always, nice to see you. Now it's getting, oh, Brian Small, how are you? I don't know. How could I miss you? I'm it's impossible to miss me. I have one question, is the new economy kind of like new math? In some respects, yes. And I think we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll see it that way. Let me kind of, because good, good last segue. time I checked, two you, plus two is still four. No, mm -mm. never uh -uh. was. Never was? Mm. Uh oh, can't explain. Two plus two in the new economy is going to be six if we're talking about debt. Ooh, that's what could be interesting. That, that, that's where it's going. But let, let, let me frame it a little bit uh, more direct. There's two major factors that I say are shaping our economy that's going to affect key issue fi financial issues for, for, for the consumer, for us. One is the dismantling of government regulation, and the other one is the new tax law. Now, when I talk about dismantling of government re regulation, the one that you see in the news all the time is the EPA. You know, the Environmental Protection Agency is now the Unenvironmental Protection Agency because the head of the agency, if he's still there, Mr. Pruitt, uh, yes. is, which you never know uh, whether by the time this show airs, whether he's there or not there. But the, the, the whole issue is um, his role is to, de is to unravel the regulations that are in the agency. But on a from a financial standpoint, look at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Mulvaney, our budget director, is now in charge of that bureau, and he's making it so that bureau doesn't do anything in the way of protecting consumers and providing any financial protection. That's what it's supposed to be, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. That says for the banking industry, they can get away with whatever they want to do. I, I, I would say from Shawshank Redemption, the harness of honesty has been lifted as to the banking industry. Payday lenders, banks on mortgage issues, no one is going to be providing any oversight as to what they're doing. No limits. That's going to take us back to where we were 2007, 2006 leading up to the financial crisis. Now the new tax law. The new tax law has a massive tax cut and it creates incentive for self-employed individuals. And the reason is is that provision that says pass-through income gets a 20% deduction. If you're a W-2 wage earner, that does nothing for you. But if you can convert yourself from being a wage earner to being a self-employed person, which many people can do, that creates the opportunity to get the benefit of that 20% deduction, which is a lot of savings when it comes to tax. You're going to see a trend where you're going to have an increase in self-employed individuals as a result of the new tax law. And Jenny, I just I just realized what that's gonna what's that what that's gonna do, that's gonna create the the Jenny Lingo full employment uh, contract, so to speak, because uh, all those people that are now becoming part of the self-employed, many of them are gonna make the same mistakes that current self-employed people do and not pay their taxes. Unfortunately, there's going to be a learning curve. So what I suggest with a lot of people wanting to take advantage of the new law is make sure you speak with your attorneys and your CPAs prior so you know what it is that you're going to be responsible yeah. for. Okay. Well, let's frame it better. Jenny, take us through what are the problems, because that's what I was kind of segueing into is 
what tax problems do you see frequently occurring with self-employed individuals? So the thing with self-employed individuals is your income goes up, your income goes down, it's not consistent, you may not be able to predict it over the year. So what a lot of people are doing is failing to make their quarterly estimated tax payments. Um, you'll make a lot of money in a couple of months and then you spend that money. So what I tell a lot of my clients is for every thousand dollars that check that is written to you, you have to realize probably only 60% of that, assuming is no yours. expenses, is actually yours. And you have to get in that mindset that every time money comes in, you have to set your taxes aside. Because what happens is most self-employed individuals say, well, I'll get it next month. Well, this was a bad month. I'm going to make it up next month. And then something always happens. So at the end of the year, a lot of my clients all of a sudden have a $20,000 tax bill that they had no clue what, what was coming because they didn't realize how far behind they got. And, and so people like, don't realize well, that when you're self-employed, employed that you have to pay both sides of the withholding, not just what yeah, used to come up. you're paying 13.35% for, for FICA right. and, and almost 3% for Medicare. When you're a wage earner, you don't have the problem. You get a W-2, they take the money out through withholding of your paycheck, you get your net check, and then you file your tax return quickly because a lot of times you get a refund. Once you're self-employed, they're putting the burden on you to make your tax payments. And here's what I think is stupid. They set it up so you have to pay quarterly estimates. Mm -hmm. It's almost like saying, you don't have to pay the money in weekly or monthly. You can t wait till the quarter. They're setting you up for failure. The smarter way of doing it would be set up your own ID number and pay online and pay the money in monthly or weekly when you get your paycheck to avoid the problem. But that's not what's going to happen, and that's not what does happen to self-employed people. They get into the problem. And I think the reason they get into it the most, see if you agree with me, Jenny, is because they get into the habit of paying last year's taxes with this year's income. Absolutely. And if this year's income goes down, they're scrambling to have enough money to pay their current bills, and there's no money to pay last year's taxes. And that problem, and then the next year is another down year, now you got two bad years. So you run into that problem on a frequent basis. We're coming up to the break, and now that we've got the framework of no government regulation because the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has been dismantled from the standpoint of providing protection, you have increased number of self-employed individuals going forward in the years. Let's now look at a case study and see how that's going to play out for the average person fighting financial protection. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Thav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Will I outlive my money? Medicaid is so confusing. A will, or do I need a trust? What if mom needs to go in a nursing home? At Samasco Law, we have the answers to all of these questions. Our attorneys will eliminate the confusion and develop a plan that's right for you. We are dedicated to veterans' benefits, assisted living, and nursing home care. Samasco Law can help prepare you for a long future. Call Samasco Law today. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. 
You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. All right, so we're talking about financial issues with the new economy. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is providing no protection. All these self-employed individuals are going to have this burden of paying in their estimates. Uh, if the economy slumps, what's that going to mean? Let me, let's put it into a real-life situation. Let's take Barry, the real estate salesperson. Here's the big background facts. His income for 2015 and 2016 were good years. He made 100,000 in 2015. He made 124,000 in 2016. He's self-employed, so he pays his own taxes in. He's just an independent contractor working as a real estate broker. In 2017, he ran into a bad streak and he only made 65,000. And he's coming in and he's telling us 2018 is not looking any better for him than it did in 2017. He's married with a family of four. They've got equity in their home of about $50,000. He tells us right off the bat he's trying to get an equity line because he's got some tax problems. He owes $10,000 for 2015. He owes $35,000 from 2016. And right now, and for 2017, he owed, which was the bad year, he still owes $15,000. So he's got a lot of tax debt. On top of that, he's got credit card debt. Because as his income fell off, he used the credit cards to supplement the reduction in income. So in 2015, he had 20000 of credit card debt. By 2016, he had 25000 because even though that was a good year, he was still using the cards. 2017, when his income dipped, his credit card debt went up to 65000 And now, today, it's at 80000 and he's basically maxed out the cards. He's just walked into the office. He sat down with Benny, with Benny, with Brian, Brian the Benny, and Jenny, and told the story. What do we do? Well, Sixty thousand of tax debt, eighty thousand dollars of credit card debt. Current income's looking at sixty thousand dollars. All right. So this is a, a very typical client that that I would see come into my office. The first thing that I typically do is let them know that their problem is going to be solvable, but we're going to have to walk through some steps to figure out what is the best collection alternative for them to resolve both their tax and their credit card debt. But the first thing I'm probably going to do is a little bit of budget counseling because we know that each year he's incurring more and more tax debt. At some point we have to stop the bleeding and say okay at this point we have to get current. So we would take a look at his current income of 60000 and calculate what his estimated tax payments need to be so that we can get him current for if he's coming in now the 2018 year because we're we're only you know you don't want to continue the problem we, yeah we, we want and we're to not step, trying to fix the whole thing at the same we're time just we're just trying fixing to fix one going year forward for the 2018 year and sometimes depending on when they come in we realize 2018 is a bust let's just make sure that we're set up for 2019. Jenny is that also an important issue that when you're dealing with IRS and trying to either set him up into a payment plan or not collectible or something to, to show that the problem is, is controlled now and not continuing? Absolutely, because technically the Internal Revenue Service is not supposed to initiate an installment agreement for you unless you have fixed the problem. Because what happens if they grant an offer or an installment agreement or put you in uncollectible, um, which means that they agree you can't afford to make a payment. If you fail to file timely the fo in the following years or you file and you owe and you don't pay that, the computer is supposed to match that up and say, we worked something out with you on the past, but you're still creating the problem in default 
um, the prior agreement. So, so rewind a little bit though because you, wish, you, you mentioned three <laughs> things that they might be willing to do that I don't think people realize. You right. mean you said you know, they might deem you uncollectible, do an offer and compromise, what was? So right, it were an installment agreement. So are all those all those are options that you all have? those are options for Barry. So right now, if we were able to get Barry current, if we just looked at the simplest thing that we would do um, in September, October of seventeen, the IRS started to say if you owe less than a hundred thousand, we'll take the payment over eighty four months as long as you do it by direct debit. Now Barry can't afford that payment, so that would not be a good option for Barry. Um, the second, yeah, because that's what, what does he owe in taxes? He's got uh, sixty thousand. It'd be a eight hundred and fifty dollar a month payment. But for some of my clients, that that is a good option. Because if it's, if I, if he had a better year, he could afford. Yes, it. Yes, if he had five hundred thousand dollars worth of income, then we would say yes, that would make the most sense. Well, if he um, had five hundred thousand dollars worth of income, he wouldn't have a tax problem. Uh, no, he that's might. That's not true. That's that's that's, that's, <laughs> that's absolutely, that's absolutely that's not true. Absolutely <laughs> right. right. It would just probably be bigger. He shouldn't have a tax problem, but we know yeah. that those. Or it should be a bigger tax, tax problem. In fact, good piece of information: tax problems occur with people that have low income middle income and high income. It does it's, not discriminate. To use the words that my dad used to say was stuff happens. <laughs> and you got to deal and when it does, you got to deal with it. Absolutely. So all right, so what do we do with it? So 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 you're getting you're getting them compliant. Right. So, that, then what happens? So the next thing I would say okay, the the 84 month payment plan is not good for you, we would then look and I would say, well, it appears, family of four, 60000 a year, that you would be uncollectible, meaning that the IRS would agree that your monthly income is not enough to cover uh, your allowable expenses. And what that is, is a payment plan which is basically zero dollars per month. It's typically good for 24 months um, before they default. Is that wait, nice? Wait, did, wait, did you hear that? that? You? you hear that? She says, it's a payment plan of zero per month. I like the that. IRS I can, will yeah. agree to it, but do you know who won't agree to that? Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, and any other bank. And the Michigan Department of Treasury. So what do you do about the, well, let's stay on taxes and then we'll get to Brian with Visa, MasterCard, and all the rest of those mm -hmm. nasty people. What, speaking of non-nasty people, the State of Michigan Department of Treasury, what do they do? They require a minimum monthly payment if you are working of $25 a month. And the reason is every voluntary payment to the State of Michigan extends the statute of limitations on collections another six years. So you have different planning issues when it comes Absolutely. to the state. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break and then we're going to shift over to Brian on the credit card and figure it out from there. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Favgro specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Favgro. Our firm will solve your problem. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Fav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Nothing provokes panic and fear like the threat of a school shooting. Unfortunately, we've seen a sharp increase in students making copycat threats in order to gain notoriety. I'm Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith. Students, this behavior will not be tolerated. Felony charges will be brought against anyone who threatens the safety of our schools. Parents, please talk to your children and pass along this message. If you threaten our schools, it will cost you your future. 
Time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers to listen to us Tuesdays 11.30 a.m. and Saturdays 7 a.m. for Law & Reality Live on Praise 102.7. Also, be sure and sign up for our monthly contest, free $50 Visa gift card, Law & Reality hat, and a copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. We have a seminar coming up on Wednesday, July 11th, 6 to 7.30 p.m., an estate plan avoids costly fireworks. We're going to talk about all the elements of an estate plan, documents you must have while living, how to avoid probate, what happens when you end up in a probate fight and how to handle that. Attendees receive a $300 gold certificate off the cost of any estate plan. Sign up for both seminars at thavgross.com, lawnreality.com, or call 888-235-HELP. I want to remind everyone that you can always come into Thav Gross for a free consultation. If it's debt issues, tax issues, business issues, estate planning issues, elder law issues with Pat, disability issues with Jeff, just call the firm or go on the links at lawandreality.com or thavgross.com and you can sign up. The phone number again is 888-235-HELP. Also, check out the websites. First of all, the website's been redone, so our website's new. Take a fresh look at it. Also, go to the websites for free reports, how to save your home from foreclosure, business formations and loans and grants for small businesses in Michigan, and the Retiree's Guide from Social Security to Social Security from Pat Samasco. I want to thank our sponsors, Thav Gross, Samasco Law, and Jeff Kirshner Law. Now back to the show. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. Nothing provokes panic and fear like the threat of a school shooting. Unfortunately, we've seen a sharp increase in students making copycat threats in order to gain notoriety. I'm Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith. Students, this behavior will not be tolerated. Felony charges will be brought against anyone who threatens the safety of our schools. Parents, please talk to your children and pass along this message. If you threaten our schools, it will cost you your future. All right, so before the break, I could see, Brian, you were itching to talk about the credit card debt. So what are we going to do about that? What about bankruptcy as an option? What about the taxes? How does that all well, play out? Well, first of all, let's start off with when the analysis starts, we want to look at and see whether or not the income tax obligations are actually dischargeable in bankruptcy. Barry will qualify for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy based on his income, based on his family size, based on all the factors. He, he can protect the equity in his home. At the moment, if Barry waits too long, Barry may have too much equity in his home and he won't be able because to protect it. Because the house goes up in value. As it goes up in value, down. the equity builds, and if the equity builds, he can only protect a certain amount based on the exemptions that are available so to him. So he Barry. doesn't want to wait. So Barry, in this situation, shouldn't wait. The problem is, is that people say, can't I just, just discharge my income tax obligations to the IRS well, most and people the think state you of Michigan? can't discharge taxes. But microphone. you can. The, the fact is, is that in order to discharge a tax obligation, one, the tax had to have come due at least three years ago. Two, you had to have filed the tax return for at least two years. And three, you couldn't have been assessed in the eight months prior to filing the bankruptcy. In this case, Barry's tax obligations are in 15, 16, and 17. They're, none of them have come due at least three years ago. So the first time he could even discharge 15 would be like April of 2019, assuming he filed on time. So we have to look at 
finding two solutions for Barry. We're going to combine the tools of financial crisis management. We're going to do a bankruptcy for Barry to get rid of his $80,000 worth of credit card debt. That eliminates it in a, like that. It's in three months, he's done, the bankruptcy process is over, and then we can either go back to, where you have to go back to Jenny, because there were two problems here, two distinct problems. If we were four years down the road, and Barry had the same amount of equity in his home, then, then, you might be able then to I could have put Barry into a Chapter 7 and erased all of his tax debt and, the credit card. and all the credit card debt. But as I said, credit cards don't wait. So then we go back to Jenny, and we have to fix the so tax So let's get problem. back to Jenny before the show is over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Jenny, so Jenny, what do we do? How, so Brian took care of the $80,000 of credit card debt. It's gone. How are you going to solve the tax problem? So they have a tax problem for 15, 16, 17, and my guess is possibly 2018 as well. We would then move on to the offer and compromise program. So since they're a family of four um, and they have... It's only sixty thousand dollars a year um, I'm of, not, income, yeah. of income. I'm not seeing uh, any information here about a four hundred one k stocks, bonds, investments, no four hundred one k life insurance at a cash value. The next thing I'd be looking at is the equity in the home. Um, I do not think the equity in their home is an issue either because what the Internal Revenue Service does when they look at an offer is they take the state equalized value, so the SEV from your property tax statement, they multiply that by two to get an idea of what the fair market value is, and then they discount that by 20%. So in this case, it's Chances very likely zero equity we could zero formula. it out or $1,000 yeah. or something like that. So that's part one. The second part would be a lot of people said, well, I had advice to quit claim deed my house and give away my car and take all the money out of my 401k and go on a cruise and gamble. That would be what they call a dissipated asset. The IRS would say, you know what? You took this money out within the last three years with the purpose to avoid paying your taxes. Barry hasn't done we that. We don't have that. The next is we would go to income allowable expenses. And based on this, it appears that that number is going to be in, in, in the red with what the IRS would allow. If that number were, let's say, $100, they would take the $100 and multiply that by 12 months to see what they could get over the next year. And they would say, okay, your offer is you know, $1,200. But in this case, I believe Barry's offer would be $100. So there you have it. So Barry gets rid of his tax debt with the simple Chapter 7 filed by Brian. Mm -hmm. And then you would do that first, right? Because that's a quick process. Right. How long does it take to get an offer and compromise Well, approved? from the date I file it, usually six months before someone's assigned. And they make a decision pretty quickly. All right, so six. So Brian does the bankruptcy, three months that takes care of it. You do an offer and compromise another six months at the end of the year. Barry's gotten rid of the tax liability. He's gotten rid of the credit card debt. Hopefully his business will pick up and he'll have more sales. He'll go back to making $100,000 a year and he'll be debt free. That's a great solution for Barry. The important message is when you look at those facts, you'd say, oh my God, Barry's like dead in the water. That's not true. You do have options. You need to explore them. Have a great week. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality. Thanks for watching.